Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church for our Wednesday, April 27th midweek devotion. We'll be in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, hanging out around verse 30. If you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles there, we'll look real quickly at a few points I want to remind the believer, the Christian of today. We had a wonderful worship service here at Crossroads uh, this past Sunday. We were learning about the, the great obstacles of stepping out of the Gospels and into the, the work of Christ through the Holy Spirit. And we began a, a study in the book of Acts. Very encouraging, um, something that I believe we're going to enjoy for several weeks to come. And I encourage you to come be a part of that. Our choir practice starts this Sunday at 9 o'clock. If you want to be a part of that, come and rehearse with us and practice with us as we sing, sing the Lord's praises. We have reached our goal with our Annie Armstrong offering. We're over $1,200. That is wonderful. Thank you for those who have given. It goes to North America Missions, every penny of it. And I want to thank you for your um, your stewardship and your, um, your giving to that offering. Let's open it in a word of prayer, and we'll dig right into God's word. Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I thank you for the sunshine, Lord, and I thank you for the rain. Thank you for the seasons that change, dear Lord, and for the great, magnificent beauty that you have given us on this earth that we live in, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, and for the wonderful work of salvation, Lord. May we never forget that it's not by any works of our own that we have been saved, but it is only from you. Lord, thank you for loving us. Lord, be with this congregation as we continue to uh, do the things you've called us to do, dear Lord, as we uh, improve things here at the, uh, at the campus. Lord, I pray that you would help us to continue to do the things that you point us to do, Lord. Help us to witness. Help us to tell others about Christ, Lord. And thank you for loving your people, Lord. Be with our shut-ins, those who are in rehabs and in the nursing home and the hospitals, Lord. I pray a special blessing on them. Lord, be with the working family today, Lord. Be with our members who go to work, who send children to school and to daycares, Lord. Be with them, Lord, as we uh, do experience the struggles of life, Lord. And I pray that you would help direct us, our speech, our minds, and our thinking, Lord, and all that we do, that it would all be done to give you glory. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for what you're doing for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to read this paragraph in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. Paul writes to the Corinthians, Keep in mind, the Corinthians are no different than you and than, than you, or I, you or I today. They had uh, failures, some big failures, but many came, came, to, came to faith. And Paul writes to remind them that it was by no works of their own. And we see that again in Paul's writing, that it is very important that we, we're, we're reminded that even though we perhaps gave our life to Christ, we have nothing to boast about by our decision to do that because without the call of the Holy Spirit, we would have never made that decision. It was all a gift from God. His son, Jesus Christ, the precious lamb, the sinless lamb of God, was a gift from God to everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. And we need to be reminded of that today. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, as he reminded the Corinthians, and I, I read as, as Paul wrote, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him, which is God, that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The great climax of this paragraph is verse 30, and that's really where I want to focus our attention on the climax states the sufficiency of God in the work that he has done to make salvation possible to the Corinthians and to us today. And the statement reads, only in Christ Jesus. Only through him. Followed by the command if, that man himself has nothing to boast about, but we can glory and boast in the Lord 
for what he has done, not what we have done. What really matters are not the categories of the wise, the influential, those of noble birth, um, that the world likes to boast up and claim. The Rather, the power of this scripture comes from the saving power that God gave through his son Jesus Christ, which is the gospel. That is the main thesis of this paragraph. The main point that we're to embrace is that it's all a work of God. It's nothing of what we've done. And he tells us here that we get some very valuable things from the gift of salvation from Christ. It is our gift of salvation for our souls. It is invaluable. A price tag cannot be put on it. And he begins to note a few of the characteristics of being in Christ. And the wonderful thing about this set of scripture is it correlates with our message Sunday. That we need to be reminded that we are we are saved because Christ is in us. Not because of some work that we did. Not because of some prayer that we prayed perhaps. But it's because that we accepted Christ into our life. That perfect gift that God gave to us. Believers have that identification with Christ. And because of that we possess some of God's wisdom. We have made the wise, wise choice. To accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior as we recognize the wisdom of the fact that Christ was crucified for our sins. We have smarted up. We have become a little bit smarter. And we have advanced from our primitive selves as humans and acknowledged and accepted the sacrifice on the old cross. The very essence of wisdom is God. That's where all wisdom comes from. I was doing a little web search today, and I, I ran across some of these types of statements. Enrich your life today. Seek wisdom. Improve your intelligence. Invest in your own development. Be the real you. Trust yourself. Now, I trust myself to a point, but I would prefer to trust God before I would trust myself revolutionize how you make decisions send 1995 to such and such and such and make a make a donation every month or a subscription and we'll teach you how to enrich your life be all that you can be make all the money you can invest in developments be the real you trust yourself and revolutionize your decision making today do I sound like an infomercial <laughs> God is the great giver of wisdom. Church, if you're looking for wisdom today, we need to acknowledge the perfect gift, God's only Son, Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes a step further with the Corinthians, and he says, you know what? Just in case someone wants to be prideful, to dispel all pride, which we know is a terrible root of evil, to dispel pride, Paul reminded them why they believed the gospel. And he listed and it is because of God that we are in Christ Jesus. It is because of God that the Corinthians were in Christ Jesus. It isn't because we were that wise or we were that powerful to gain salvation. It's because God entrusted and gave us that opportunity to accept his precious son. Paul also writes in Ephesians chapter 2, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So many times we like to secularize our decision to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'm the one who walked down the aisle. I'm the one who asked the pastor to pray salvation for me. I'm the one who got baptized. I'm the one who allowed that to happen. We couldn't be any more wrong in that statement. It's all a gift from God. God is the originator of salvation. Jesus is the originator of God. He put it all in place. No credit belongs to human beings who have come to Christ. All credit belongs to God. And the apostle declares the nature of this great wisdom of salvation and the identity 
that we identify with Christ in us, it all comes from God. Today, as we go through this little devotion, we need to know that it's all because of God. I told our, our church this Sunday, you know, we worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're not worshiping three gods. We're worshiping one God. And our God is alive and well, and he is making every... Um, plea in every call to draw lost souls to him, to his son Jesus Christ, that the, the administering and the anointing of the Holy Spirit would woo men to, to the acknowledgement and the wisdom that someone died for them and his name is Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness, scripture says, he is our holiness, and he is our redemption or our salvation. How did that happen? Because Christ bore the sins of you and I on that cross that we might receive his right standing before God. We cannot stand before God. There's no way that we can stand before God in any other type of way except through Jesus Christ. That is the only way that we can stand in a right relationship before God. God himself is the ultimate force. God himself is behind salvation for those who believe. He bore our sins, Romans 10, 4, on that cross that we might be in that right standing. The words holiness, the words sanctification, they describe the purity that we have through Jesus Christ. And the Corinthians, they had lived lives just like you and I have. They had had ups and downs. They had had um, those who wanted to boast, those who were rich, those who were poor, those who were powerful, those who were not. And Paul reminds them that nothing came without the work of God. The first thing I want to show you here is the understanding that God gives us through wisdom. It's because of him, God, that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom. But he don't leave it there. He makes sure that we know where this wisdom came from and it came from God. Wisdom from God. King James Version says, Are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom. This first blessing here that we get from God, that we get from salvation, is wisdom. And we will learn that wisdom is the only way that you can receive Christ Jesus. Wise men choose Christ. If you're looking for a wise man, look for a Christian. They have made the right choice. Schools today try to put so much emphasis on people with a lot of degrees and a lot of education, a lot of awards. But church, if they don't know Jesus Christ, they don't have the wisdom that you and I have. One of the greatest learning experiences that we can know is to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior and to know that it's a gift from God. You cannot know God without knowing Jesus Christ. Christ is the key to knowing God. Christ is the key to Christianity. Christ is the great revealer of God to man. We cannot know God except through Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1, the author writes, The Son is the radiance of God's glory. Christ, Jesus Christ, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Now we know who wrote this. Paul writes, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. What a wonderful wisdom to know God and to know a little bit about God. We sit here today, wherever you are for this evening devotion, I'm sitting here in the church office. We know very little about God, but we know enough. We know all that God wants us to know, and we can learn more about God as our Christian walk and as God reveals himself to us. But one thing we can know for sure is that we made the wise decision of knowing God through his son, Jesus Christ. This wisdom does not come to Christ's rejectors. This wisdom does not come from those who defame and dispute the name of Jesus Christ. This wisdom comes only to those who call upon the name of the Lord and are saved. The second thing that we receive from our salvation from God is we become a like of holiness. Scripture tells us it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become 
what does he say? Who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Righteousness, another blessing from our Lord from knowing Jesus Christ is the blessing of righteousness. This righteousness puts us in a right standing before God that he can accept us for, for, for who we are now, that we have Christ living in us. That is the only way that we can stand before a holy God. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 reminds us that our own fleshly righteousness is rejected by God. But God is so holy and he is so pure that nothing will be allowed in heaven that is unholy, which means, church, this is what it means, that we are doomed without Jesus Christ in our life. We must have Jesus Christ in our life to stand before a right relationship in righteousness before a holy God. The third thing that scripture tells us is, and I want to share with you, is separation. Or scripture can refer to it like this, Redemption or sanctification, depending on what transla translation you're reading. But it is separation from the world we live in today. When God looks out his window of heaven and he looks down upon the earth, he sees those who are lost and he sees those who are forgiven, those who have been saved, those who have experienced redemption and salvation and when we make the conscious choice to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are separated from the world. We belong to God. We are the children of God. And only in Christ do we gain this separation unto God. There's no other way. There's no other way that we can be on Team Jesus without going through the cross, without knowing the blood of Jesus Christ and applying it to our life. Many times we hear the the saying told that remember who you are. You remember perhaps when we were growing up, our parents, our grandparents used to tell us whenever we would misbehave and they'd go get a switch and they'd get ready to whoop us. They'd say, son, remember who you are. Remember whose son you are. In other words, you have got a, a legacy. You have got an expectation expected upon your life. Remember who you are. Don't act like the heathens. Act like someone who has some home training. <laughs> I can remember that, that phrase quite often. Not that I ever got a whooping, but that sometimes we, we, got, we, we had to be, uh, be reminded that we need to act a little bit better than what we're acting. Christians need to be reminded of that today. Those who have given their life to Jesus Christ, we're separated from the world. We need to remember whom we belong to, and we belong to the Most High King. We belong to Jesus Christ. We belong to God, and Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession on our behalf, for our difficulties, for our hard times, for the, the things that are upcoming that we don't have the answers for, where we're an anxious type of people. Be reminded today that we're separated from the world, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is making prayer and intercession on our behalf as we speak at this very moment. We have been separated from the world. We belong to God. We belong to Him. And church, we need to act just like that, we need to act accordingly. Be reminded who we, who we belong to. And fourth and finally, I want to share this with you. This is what verse 30 says. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. What does this tell me, the fourth and final thing that we have through Christ? This redemption, to me, is security. Now, in the United States, last year alone, the business of security, making people feel safe, whether it be a security alarm on your home, whether it be hiring guards at the mall or whatever it is, generated $46 billion, $46 billion U.S. dollars last year. That is a huge huge market. Around 810,000 people are employed as security guards in our country last year. That is astounding. We are a society who is ate up with wanting to be secure. We want to know that we're safe when we go home. 
when we go to the movies, if we go to the mall, if we go to the grocery store, if we drive down the road, we want to know that we're safe. Well, church, we can, we can have a sense of safety, but only through the blood of Jesus Christ can we have the eternal security that God offers the believer. It is this redemption that reminds us that a ransom has been paid for our souls. That payment was made by Jesus Christ on the cross. And when we receive, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we gain that ransom. That ransom has been paid for our on our behalf. This provides us with the greatest security of all time. On any continent, in any on any planet, in any hemisphere, the blood of Jesus Christ, salvation, provides the greatest security that we can ever have. And this is protected by divine judgment from God Almighty. This, this secures us and shields us from divine eternal judgment to the depths of hell. There is no insurance policy as good as, as the one that God offers. God has put into place through his son Jesus Christ the opportunity that we can have salvation and have it through him what is the reminder today well the reminder today is a few things that we need to be wise we need to recognize that there is wisdom by from, from knowing the Lord and that wisdom comes only from the Lord we need to be reminded that we are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ that means we can stand before a holy God who cannot allow anything that is not holy in his presence we can be admitted into heaven and we will be by the blood of Jesus because we're in a right standing with God we need to also be reminded our third point is that we're separated from the world we need to be reminded of whom we belong to and church we need to act like it and finally and fourthly and I'm ready to close we need to enjoy the security of the believer brother Jeff does that mean we get saved and, and live however we want to live well I hope it don't we shouldn't do that we are to be mindful of the sacrifice that has been paid on our behalf through the blood of a of a sinless savior who died upon a very cruel cross we just celebrated the empty tomb a couple weeks ago but church i want to tell you today's not easter but our savior still lives today and he offers the best security that, that we can ever ask for and that is the security of salvation through the blood of jesus christ thank you for joining me let me close us in prayer lord thank you for the reminder today of the the precious gift that you have given those who have called upon the name of the Lord, who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, help us to act like it. Lord, help us to be reminded whom we belong to. Help us to enjoy the security of the believer, to acknowledge and accept the wisdom that you give us, dear Lord, and to be mindful, dear Lord, of whom we belong to, Lord. Thank you for blessing your people. Lord, I pray a special blessing right now on those within our congregation, within the sound of my voice, Lord, who have difficult times this week, who have unexpected things that could happen tomorrow or throughout this week. The unknown is a, is a terrible thing, Lord, but the unknown is a tool that Satan can use, Lord. Remind us today that you've already looked ahead, that you're already moving the puzzle pieces that we can't even see. Lord, thank you for taking care of your believers. Thank you for taking care of your children, Lord. Lord, remind us right now whom we belong to. We love you, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining me today.